At a time of global health, climate, and ecological crises, nation states around the world are spending over $1.9 trillion each year on war, almost $5 billion a day. The UK's Ministry of Defence is scheduled to procure a new generation of military hardware, worth up to £350 billion. But militarism is more than a deadly diversion of funds from the health of people and the planet towards warfare. It is an essential ingredient fueling the climate and ecological crises. The United States military is the world's single largest polluter. The UK's military industrial sector has a carbon footprint of at least 11 million tonnes a year, more than entire countries like Madagascar and Zambia. Continuing four centuries of European conquest and settlement into the Americas, Africa, Asia, and Australia, London's mining giants, Anglo-American, BHP, Rio Tinto, and Glencore, emerged and transformed into multi-billion dollar transnational corporations over the last hundred years. These mining giants tend to conceal the role their minerals play in the arms trade, preferring to emphasize their contribution to more socially useful products. But without minerals, from metals like aluminium, cobalt and platinum, to rare earth elements and other byproducts, there would be no weapons for war. These mining operations are often confronted by resistance, but community resistance is often met with repression, from intimidation, surveillance and harassment to forced disappearances, invasions and assassinations. London's mining giants are involved in at least 83 cases of conflict surrounding extractive operations. Mining companies apply various counterinsurgency tactics to maintain extractive legitimacy, like sponsoring schools and hospitals, or using environmental initiatives to rebrand and greenwash ecological and social harm. Arms companies require large volumes of natural resources to be extracted from the earth in order to produce weapons and technologies for war. The MOD's next generation of military hardware assembles at least 514,270 tonnes of raw materials, inevitably leading to millions of tonnes of toxic waste in the extraction process. But global military powers like the UK frame climate change as a security issue, rooting their concerns in questions of operability that expand rather than reduce their spheres of activity, from the melting Arctic to frontiers of space. Military greenwashing is also increasing, with the arms industry developing environmentally friendly weapons, from lithium-ion battery tanks to solar-powered drones, and the conservation of wildlife serving as a pretext for military intervention. All stages of warfare generate significant ecological consequences alongside human catastrophe, including water, air, and land pollution, destroyed habitats and infrastructures, and escalating carbon emissions. British armed forces are committed to over 30 operations in at least 25 countries, including covert wars in Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya, Pakistan, Somalia, Syria, and Yemen. Up to 6% of the Earth's landmass is used for military training, including weapons and explosives testing, and using toxic chemicals to maintain and service vehicles. Britain has an extensive network of at least 32 overseas garrisons, from Belize to Brunei, Kenya to Oman. The UK is the world's second largest arms exporter and fourth highest trader in security and surveillance equipment. According to the MOD, one purpose of military exports and engagements is to assure the UK's access to secure and affordable resources. Extractivism is a militarized process. It violently ruptures ecosystems and habitats. In doing so, it displaces, then polices human communities with ongoing connections to the land. Militarism is an extractive process. It depends on vast quantities of natural resources to innovate and assemble more deadly technologies of control and destruction. This is the organizing principle of martial mining. <laughs>